My name is Jeremy Barme. I'm the founding director of the Australian Centre on China and the World, and I'm delighted to welcome you all here today. Um, I must also say that I'm particularly delighted to have our Vice Chancellor, Ian Young, here today, and I'll, he will speak in a few moments. One of the reasons being that this hall um, would not exist without the Vice Chancellor's direct support, and it's a, it's a, a reality that's added significantly to this building. Um, our centre, its functions, and also the ability of our centre to engage broadly with the university community and also with the broader international academic community and our own community here in Canberra. And in saying that, I'd say that we, we, are, um, we celebrate the fact that we are on the traditional land of the Ngunnawal people, and we are, for the moment, custodians of that land, just as we are, in this centre, the custodians of a tradition of dealing with the what we speak of as being the world that creates meaning using Chinese languages and ideas. And this is a custodianship that goes back, predates this university, goes back to 1932 when the George E. Morrison lectures in ethnology were established here in Canberra by um, the Australian Chinese community with the support of local scientists and academics. And ANU became the inheritor of that tradition of lectureship in the early 1950s under the leadership of our first Vice-Chancellor, Douglas Copeland, a noted economist, a noted diplomat, and a man who brought Chinese studies to the ANU as the first Vice-Chancellor, created our Chinese studies library, and also engaged meaningfully with the world in Taiwan and mainland China. A unique figure who had a great and profound influence on everything that's been done at this university since, and a person whose work we'll celebrate in our next exhibition um, because his significance is that is one that has allowed really this centre to be created. It's a centre that was established in 2010 with the support of the Commonwealth Government and our then Prime Minister Kevin Rudd and our university in creating a centre that aims at trying to engage with what we call either the Chinese Commonwealth or Greater China or again as I, we sometimes speak of the Sinosphere, that world that uses Chinese languages to create significance and meaning for mankind. That's why you'll notice we call our center the Zhonghua Chanchulian Yugongxin and not the Zhonghua Chanchulian Yugongxin. Zhonghua being, as you know, a much more ancient term and one signifying that which is flourishes, cultivates, expands, and engages with that which is possible in, in terms of civilization. Thank you. Um, and we named our center very purposely this way so as to try and encompass some of the complexity and realities of the world of China. And it's not just the People's Republic of China. I'm delighted that we are celebrating our activities with this first conference of the year. It's about Taiwan. Taiwan, a part of the world that in the 1930s and 40s was called in Australia the Near North. So having a view from the south of the Near North is a wonderful thing for us to be doing in the year 2015. And in particular, in regard to that, I'd congratulate Dr. Benjamin Penny, my deputy director, good friend and colleague, who's put a huge amount of work into creating this conference, along with our stalwart and superwoman, Nancy Chu, who is um, the organizer sans pareil in, in, our, in our world, but also our many other CIW colleagues, all of whom are participating in various ways in helping coordinate and organize the conference. In practical terms, we thank the university for its support and also for the Taipei, uh, the Taipei Economic Cultural Office here in Australia. As uh, Ben pointed out earlier, Catherine Jung has been a wonderful support here, as has William Lin. We're very sorry that Catherine has gone, but are delighted to welcome here today as perhaps one of his first official duties, David Lee's um, participation this evening, which is a wonderful opportunity for us. And I'll say a few words about David in a moment after I've introduced the Vice Chancellor. I'm also delighted to um, congratulate the Lin Peng Yuan Cultural and Educational Foundation for its support. I congratulate you for supporting this wonderful enterprise. And also uh, good friends of ours and great collaborators in the Academy of Sinica, the Institute of Taiwanese History, or Taiwan History, rather. Um, these groups have all been crucial in us bringing this event together and uh, I hope um, creating a wonderful conference over the next few days. I'm also delighted that all of our keynote speakers have been able to, well, nearly all of them have been able to join us. Um, and we look very much forward to your contributions to the following days. Um, I won't say any more. I'd just like to thank you all for being here and to welcome our Vice Chancellor Ian and to say a few words. Thank you, Ian.
Well, Jeremy, thank you very much for those opening comments and the introduction. Uh, on behalf of the Australian National University, I'd like to warmly welcome to the university uh, all of our guests for this uh, international conference on Taiwan studies. Um, as Jeremy said, uh, ANU through uh, what is the ANU College of Asia and the Pacific is one of the world's leading centres for teaching and research uh, on Asia. And indeed, again, as Jeremy said, that really stems from the foundations of this university. When the university was created in 1946, one of our founding schools were the, was the Research School of Pacific Studies, set up to drive ANU's engagement with the region. And it aimed essentially to position ANU as a global centre of excellence in research, teaching and influence on the whole region of, of Asia and the Pacific. And today we can boast, I think, uh, without too much uh, doubt, that ANU hosts what is the largest concentration of regional experts of any university in the English-speaking world. And that's quite a remarkable uh, achievement when you consider just how important uh, Asia and the Pacific uh, is today. We have, uh, amongst the things that ANU does, we have the widest range of courses uh, on Asia and the Pacific in Australia and offer the largest range of languages uh, from this region of any university in this country. Um, of all of our links to Asia, we're particularly proud of our very strong connections with Taiwan's academic institutions. Uh, and we're also very pleased uh, to be able to welcome so many of our friends from Taiwan here to the university for this important conference. Just last year, the university hosted the very popular Made in Taiwan exhibition, an exhibition from the Taiwan Academy of Fine Arts that was hosted at the ANU School of Art and, and represented a diverse range of Taiwanese visual art. Early in 2014, uh, a new memorandum of understanding was signed uh, between ANU and the National Central Library of Taiwan. We agreed amongst uh, various things to share bibliographic records of our Chinese rare books with the National Central Library for their newly developed Union Catalogue of Chinese Rare Books database. ANU also boasts uh, a whole range of relationships uh, with Taiwanese academic institutions, including uh, very close relationships with the Taiwan, Taiwan National Sun Yat-sen University, the National Taiwan Normal University, and the National Taiwan University, all of whom uh, are ANU exchange partners. And uh, of course, for a university which boasts such a, a right, wide range of Asian studies and indeed uh, has such extensive language programs as we do, uh, those sorts of exchange programs are in uh, significant demand uh, with our students. Amongst all of those uh, activities, I think one of which is particularly significant to note uh, is that uh, just last year we agreed with the Ministry of Education to extend uh, the well-established Taiwan Studies program, uh, which the ANU runs, which includes courses in Taiwanese history, cinema, culture, arts, calligraphy, language and literature. So going uh, well beyond uh, the narrow range of activities that you would normally see within many universities. <coughs> So with those opening comments, I think you can see that uh, ANU does indeed boast uh, very significant links uh, to Taiwan, um, and links which, as I said, uh, are very deep, meaningful, and ones that we're very proud of. And so I'm uh, very pleased to be able to be here uh, today for this uh, important opening of this conference on Taiwan studies, and I hope that you find it both a, a rewarding uh, and very interesting conference uh, over the next few days. Thank you all very much. Vice Chancellor, thank you very much indeed. Um, and now it's my great pleasure to welcome the new um, representative of uh, the Republic of China here in Canberra, uh, Dr. Li Dawei, or David Dawei Li. Um, uh, we are very honored to have uh, Dr. Li here tonight, but also here in Australia, as he has a broad experience of dealing with what for this country is of great importance, and that is the relationship um, with the United States, something that um, looms large in this country's own concerns with our region and with the future um, of the region, relationships with the Chinese world. You may well have well seen the um, recent uh, 
poll results of today of the Chinese uh, Research Institute at UTS in Sydney, run by, an, again, another good friend of ours, Bob Carr, which um, speaks about Australia's response to the possible conflict over territorial issues between China and Japan, the People's Republic and Japan in coming times, and how the vast majority of respondents to um, questions on this subject uh, resiled from picking sides or wanting to be involved. Anyway, um, Dr. Lee has had a, a very vast experience. He was, has, holds a PhD um, in foreign affairs from the University of Virginia in the States, but has a vast experience of dealing with the United States and has written widely also on the Taiwan Relations Act, that crucial um, and complicated document related to, to Taiwan. So it's a, we're not only welcoming um, a seasoned diplomat, a seasoned foreign affairs thinker, strategist, uh, but also a colleague and uh, a co-academic. So thank you so much, David. Uh, Vice Chancellor Yang, Professor Barmey, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for your very kind introduction. Uh, I think it gives me a great pleasure to co-host uh, this uh, evening's uh, reception with uh, CIW at uh, ANU. I think over the years, and the leadership of uh, Professor Barmey, I think uh, this institute has really excelled at uh, the world uh, stage on the study of uh, China and the world. And uh, as uh, we know that, uh, you know, my country, Republic of China and Taiwan, is a relatively much smaller country in terms of uh, geographic size to compare with Australia. Australia, in terms of the land mass, is uh, 214 times larger than Taiwan. <laughs> However, we maintain almost uh, the same size of uh, population, 23 million people. And uh, Taiwan now is the number seven export market for Australia, and uh, the 11th uh, uh, trading partner. And uh, last year, as I think it was uh, the year of 2013, the total trade volume reached the uh, 11.6 billion dollars. I can tell you that 70% uh, of the iron ore we import came from this country. And also 40% of uh, the coal also came from Australia. I think that, that tells you that we have a very extensive and uh, substantive relationship. Currently, we also have uh, close to 30,000 young people they are taking advantage of the generosity of this country, and they are on their walking holiday tour in this country. And uh, that makes Taiwan as uh, the second largest uh, contributor to this program, only next to the United Kingdom. And uh, also, I think uh, uh, before I came to uh, this country, uh, President Ma ying told me in person, he told me that he has put a very high premium on the bilateral relationship. He also told me the story that uh, in 2006, when he was mayor of Taipei, he came to Canberra and was uh, well received by the, Canadian, uh, by the Australian government. <laughs> and uh, uh, during the conversation, he was uh, very much inspired by many of the ideas of uh, this uh, great country. And uh, I think uh, that was uh, uh, the inception of uh, his uh, viable diplomacy since uh, 2008, which uh, is calling for transparency and good governance. And uh, over the past uh, few years, uh, our two countries have uh, work together uh, to exchange opinions and information on the economic cooperation uh, in this uh, Southern Pacific region. With that effort, I think that has really increased the mutual trust between our two countries. I hope uh, in the coming years, uh, I'll be able to work with uh, each of you, uh, trying to help to uh, improve the mutual interest and benefits of our two countries. 
Thank you so much.